Okay, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate some tips and tricks for advanced argument mapping with an emphasis on capturing objections in your reconstruction of someone else's argument and then adding your own evaluation to your reconstruction of someone else's argument. So I'm going to open a new mind map and as usual, I will go to view and start argument visualization. And the example I'm gonna work with comes from Nathan Nobis's Ethics of Extra Credit. So his main claim is that extra credit is unjustified and unfair. And the overarching structure of the argument is to give arguments for extra credit and then evaluate and object to each of those arguments and then give arguments against extra credit. I'm going to focus in on one argument for extra credit. So extra credit is justified on the grounds that they, and here's one justification. It motivates students to participate. And then his response to that argument. So I've already put that into a mind map file. I've copied and pasted that text into a note and note you can hide notes with this little toggle button and I mapped this argument already. So main claim, extra credit assignments are justified. Reason, it motivates students to participate in stuff and students learn from participating stuff. And then the question is, how do we include this evaluation and objection to this argument in the map? It's easier when this person is objecting to a premise because then you just add an objection. But in this case, the author isn't objecting to either premise. He's not saying that extra credit doesn't motivate students to, per to participate. Of course, extra credit motivates students to participate. And he isn't saying that students won't learn anything from the participation. He's saying that they won't learn something relevant. So how do we include this in the map? There's two ways to do it, actually. One of them might not be so obvious. I'll start with that one. One thing you can do is identify the principle required to support this conclusion. Can you tell what that is? It's something like assignments that contribute to learning are justified. That's the underlying principle being assumed in this argument, and this can be interpreted as objecting to that principle. Only assignments that contribute to relevant learning are justified. It's an objection to that principle, and I clicked the toggle implicit claim to show that this is implicit, and that's what he's objecting to. Or, here's my other map. You can, here's the, the argument mapped as usual, instead of including some implicit principle that he is objecting to, you can include an objection to the inference. So if you click here and highlight the whole little bar and add an objection, you get a line. What it means to have a line here is that this is an objection to the inference, not to a particular premise. So we've got these reasons don't provide good support for the conclusion. It's true that this and it's true that that, but what makes an assignment justified is that it contributes to the relevant learning objectives of the course. So basically I put that here and his point is that even if these are true, it doesn't justify extra credit. Here's why. So those are two equally good ways of capturing what he's saying is wrong with this argument. Both of them have to do with these premises not supporting the conclusion. And this one just identifies that it doesn't support the conclusion because the implicit principle you'd need to accept for them to support the conclusion is false, according to the author. Now, that's how we include the objections raised by the author themselves when we're trying to reconstruct their argument. Now we might also want to evaluate their argument. This is where we add our own evaluation to the map. So is this inference good? 
we can, he suggests that, well, the problem here, the way I've set it up, um, is that there's an implicit principle that is problematic. But if this is the right way to capture it, well then, uh, here, I'm gonna hide this. Then when you hover over this, you can adjust how strong this is. And since this is a strong argument, we'll make it thick. And the objection is to this principle. Or in this case, we'd leave it thin if we agree that this is an objection because we admit to this, um, if you agree with the author. So you can toggle this stuff to evaluate inferences yourself if you think they're good or bad. The other thing you can do is add annotations to the bits of argument, but this has a downside in that you can only write in a single line, and if you have a lot of stuff to say, it's not going to fit. So a better way of annotating an argument when you are evaluating someone else's argument is to use sticky notes. So there's this little option here, add sticky note. You can add sticky notes to premises. This premise is false. Or you can add sticky notes to this little bar here to show that you are writing about the whole argument. This inference is bad. That's my recommendation. And honestly, this can be useful to do, but I don't use this tool very much myself. I just use sticky notes to either say the inference is bad, I'll write that here, or the premise is false, and I'll write that here. That's how I use sticky notes when I am evaluating someone else's argument that I have constructed in a map. If I am constructing my own argument, and it includes some objections and responses to objections, if I'm constructing my own argument map, what I use sticky notes for is stuff that is not part of the argument. If you want to make a note about something or add like, be sure to illustrate how this definition applies or illustrate with concrete case, sometimes examples are part of an argument, but sometimes they're just used to illustrate what you mean when you say a thing. Like that might be a thing you include here, or if you want to include some signposting or Lots of components of essays and speeches and whatnot are about communicating with the reader and are not properly part of your argument. And so I use sticky notes to include that stuff in my argument map for my own arguments. Okay, so we've covered how to capture the objections that come when those objections are in the thing you are mapping and how to include your own evaluation of someone else's argument after you've mapped it. The last thing I want to do is give you some tips on how to print your map or put it on a PDF in a way where it's readable and appropriately sized. So I'm just going to make a messy, this is so ugly, I'm going to undo it. So here's a bigger map and I'm just going to copy this. Make it even bigger. Okay, do it again. Sorry, I'm getting dizzy here. Attach it to something. Okay, so now my argument's really big and messy. Something that hopefully you saw in an earlier tutorial is that you can use the F key to collapse parts of your map. Not Command F or Control, just plain old F. So if I click this and I click F, it collapses bits of my map. This can be a helpful thing to do if you want to fit the overarching structure of your map into one page. So maybe I get the basic structure of the map visible and I put that on a page, like I print it or make a PDF, and then I open one at a time, PDF of that, PDF of this, if that fits, that might be one way to do it and then label them so it's super clear when you hand it in how the map works. If it really is that complicated, you're probably not going to have to deal with super complicated maps, but that's one thing you can do. Or you can just make multiple files when it comes time to make PDFs and print them. And I'm going to open these up again. And maybe you just detach part of it 
and put this in its own file and print that and detach the other major chunk and put that in its own file and then just try to make it super clear how it all fits together. The nice thing about keeping it in a single map and using the F key is that the numbers all stay the same. If you separate them into multiple files, they'll all, they won't all have unique numbers. Sometimes that matters or it's helpful for seeing what actually goes where if it, the numbers are consistent. Okay, that completes my tips and tricks for mapping, especially objections, and for adding your own evaluation to an argument that you have mapped.